Hi, and welcome to another Bitcoin strategy video. In this video, we're going to talk about Bollinger Bands, the technical indicator called Bollinger Bands. It's a fairly common indicator. I have used it for quite a while in trading stocks, in timing my buying when accumulating stocks. And so in this video, I will go through all the fundamentals. What's the idea behind Bollinger Bands? How are they calculated? How can you use them to buy and maybe sell? And then I've also got some backtesting results. I've looked at how good does this indicator actually work. So what you can see over here are the Bollinger Bands. When you go to tradingview.com, you click on the advanced chart. You click then here on this F over here for functions. You enter Bollinger Bands. Then you just double click over here. You will get those fancy lines around your price data. And so the idea of this indicator is it gives you a quote unquote normal range of where the price normally should be at. So the indicator consists of three lines. On the one hand, you have this line here in the middle. You've got the top and the bottom. The middle line is just a moving average. So the standard for the Bollinger Bands is a 20 day moving average. The bottom and the top line are calculated by using standard deviation. So when we double click on the indicator, on the line of the indicator, we can see in inputs what kind of parameters this indicator takes. So first of all, we got the length. So that's 20 in this case. So the middle line of this indicator is a 20 day moving average. And then we've got a standard deviation parameter over here. And the standard deviation parameter gives you the distance of those top and bottom line to your moving average. The general idea of the indicator is based on that markets are more or less efficient. So you do have a general trend where prices move. So in this case, price appreciates, but then you do have some random noise around this price appreciation. And so prices go up and down. And in general, you can't really predict the randomness. And so mathematically, random behavior, you can express as a bell curve. So that looks something like this. Okay, so, so we do have here on the x axis, a certain amount of return. So let's say I don't know, this is 3%. And maybe here we have got the average of how much this asset on general returns. So that would be let's say 0.1%. And then we've got minus 3%. And on the y axis, you've got the number of observations. So for example, we could plot here the daily returns, we would just look at what on average did this asset return every day. And then we could see a distribution like this. So we don't see very often plus 3% days, we don't see very often minus 3% days, but very often we see something here in the middle. And so when you have a normal distribution like this, you can basically measure the distance from the mean with something called sigma. You can call it sigma or you can just call it standard deviation. So now how is this useful? That's useful because you can now kind of give a probability to how likely it is that a price will move in a certain direction. So say when you look at the distance here from the mean and you go away two standard deviations from that mean, so sigma of two, you will cover with this green area, you will cover 95% of all cases. So when you determine this point over here and this point over here, you have got a minus value and a plus value and you will know that in 95% of days, your return will fall somewhere in this area. And so now what does the Bollinger Bands do? They have their average, the 20 day moving average, then they calculate the standard deviation in the same time frame in those 20 days. And then they add two standard deviations to the top and they subtract two standard deviations at the bottom. And so this way, the Bollinger Bands try to get a range of where 95% of the price movements should be. So in theory, what should happen if we just look at the data statistically, we should say 5% of the price data to be outside of the Bollinger Bands. So those are those outlier moments. So we have here something above the standard deviation, we would be somewhere in this area. And this would then correspond to this point over here outside of the Bollinger Bands and potentially a selling signal. And the same goes for when the prices are below the Bollinger Bands. So now the question is, are those trading signals valid enough if you backtest this whole strategy? So you would buy whenever the price is below the lower Bollinger Band and you would maybe sell when it's above the Bollinger Band. Now the problem with that strategy is, for example, we can see that in some points in time, the price might be above the upper Bollinger Band and then not actually reach the lower band anymore, but touch the upper band again. So you would have two sell signals, but we wouldn't have a buy signal in between. And so I was looking at this indicator a little bit differently. I was thinking maybe it's at least helpful for timing buying signals. 
So one good strategy with Bitcoin, for example, is to just dollar cost average into the market, right? So every month we would buy a bit and just hold onto those Bitcoin for the long term. We accumulate more Bitcoin over time and just ride the waves over the long haul. Now, one approach to use those Bollinger Bands is to maybe only buy when the price is below the lower Bollinger Band and thus get on average maybe a slightly cheaper price than if we were just to buy randomly, say, on the first of every month. So we would save money and then just wait until we get a buying signal. And so we only use the Bollinger Bands always to buy and we don't really sell at all. And so in order to backtest the strategy, what we can do is we can look at are the prices on average when they are below the lower Bollinger Band lower than any random price in the data set. So can we get on average a cheaper buying price by waiting for those Bollinger Band buying signals? So that's what the backtest is about. So here's a little visual for this. We would only buy whenever the price is below the lower Bollinger Band. So we got here some red buying signals. We got here a buying signal. We got another one over here and then one over here. And the question is, if we average the prices, those prices that are marked in red, if we average them and compare this to the average price over the whole time frame, do we actually get a price discount? Can we actually enter the market on average on a cheaper price? And so first let's look at how many buying signals do we actually get. So in the data set, I had around 4,000 days of Bitcoin data and the number of days where the price was below the lower Bollinger Band was 171. So the fraction of buying days is 4.4% compared to the overall data set. Now this is more than what we would have expected given this normal distribution because this green area over here covers around 95% of price data. So each tail end of that distribution should have actually 2.5% of cases. So since we look only at the buying side, we have this side over here and this should actually be 2.5%. So given that we get not 2.5% of buying signals, but 4.4%, we can already see that a normal distribution is probably not 100% accurate. This might be due to a skew in the curve. This might also be due to sample size, but it's just interesting to note. So here's the result. The average price for Bitcoin in the whole data set was 4,439 US dollars. So I basically took all the time from the very early days around 10 years ago to today. And the average lower band price, so when the price was below the lower Bollinger Band, was $3,687. And so on average, if we would have only bought when the price is below the lower Bollinger Band, we would have gotten on average a discount of around 17%. So it does look like on the first glance, that if we only buy on days below the lower Bollinger Band, we do get cheaper prices. So if you dollar cost average into the market, it does look like you get a better price. You get more Bitcoin for the US dollars invested if you only buy on those days. But there's more to it. But before I continue, can you please press the like button? If you enjoy this kind of content, if you press like, the video will be spread more within YouTube and so the channel can grow. And so if the channel grows, that's obviously very motivating for me as well. Thank you. Now, what I was wondering is how stable is this discount? So this is now the analysis of the average price if you take the whole 10 years. But what if you only look at, say, one year or two year or four years and you roll this analysis over the price history of Bitcoin? Will you always get a discount? So say you look at the results for the first year and the second year and the third year. Are those discounts stable or do we actually have years where we on average overpay? And so I've done exactly that. That's the result. If you look at the one year rolling discount, so how much was the price below the Bollinger Band lower compared to the average price in a given year? And you roll this discount over the overall price history. You do see times where we actually overpay and other times where we underpay. So it doesn't look like when you only do the strategy over one year that you are guaranteed to get a lower price on average compared to just randomly buying. Now that's relatively discouraging. So what I was thinking, maybe we can just smoothen this out. And if you have a longer time horizon and we maybe dollar cost average into the market, not for one year, but say for four years, maybe this discount is more stable and maybe the strategy still works. So let's look at the discount when we look at the two year rolling window. 
that's what we get with two years. So still, it's not too positive. We do have times where we overpay quite significantly by 60%. Other times where we time the market relatively well with those Bollinger Bands. But still, it's not stable at all. We don't have a line that goes above the zero mark consistently. Okay, so finally, I look now at the four-year rolling. And that's how the four-year rolling looks like. Also pretty disappointing. No stable results at all. It almost looks like the Bollinger Bands, even though the theory behind it is quite convincing. Practically speaking, if you just use it to time our buying when dollar cost averaging, it doesn't seem to give us a lot of edge. And so my final take on this indicator is I would probably, at least with those parameters that are set per default, the 20 day and the two standard deviation parameters, if we use those and we use the Bollinger Bands to time buying and selling, it doesn't look like it works too well. By looking at the charts, you do have some encouraging signals. But overall, if you just look at long-term backtesting history, the signals don't seem to be good enough. And so at least for Bitcoin, I would probably not use Bollinger Bands to time the market. I did use them for stock purchases and I did get fairly good results. So just to basically buy the S&P 500 ETF. And maybe one reason why with stocks it works a bit better is because the standard deviation, the price fluctuations, they are more stable. So if you just look at Bitcoin, we do get relatively low price action. We do have relatively little standard deviation. Those bands are very close to each other. And then we get sudden breakouts and the bands expand a lot. Just because of this low predictability of how volatile the price will be, the indicator itself has less value for crypto compared to stocks. If you have any other idea how to use this indicator or if you have maybe tested something or you use different parameters for the indicator, let me know. You can comment this below as well. I might make an analysis on this as well. Maybe those results will be better. But for now, I would probably rather stay away from this indicator. Even though it's relatively popular, it looks relatively interesting. But the data shows the signals are not worth that much. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet. Please also give this video a like and feel free to join the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. See you next time. Bye-bye.